just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Hey guys, I'm home. Oh hey James, how was your day at work? Was the shop busy? Uh, pretty busy. Oh, but the way Tails, can I have a word with you please? Oh, okay. Tails, first things first, it's not what you think. Don't worry about it. Right, so I've literally just been back from the game shop. And... Let's just say that you struck a very good chord with the staff there. Both Carolyn and Greg are both very happy that you arrived the week leading up to the anniversary of my accident. So they have offered me a substantial discount of a certain game to um, give you a shot on a review of entirely of your own and as a welcome home gift. Carolyn and Greg, if you're watching this, thank you so much. Right, so Tails, would you like to see the game that both Carolyn and Greg want you to review on your own? Heck yeah, let's see it. Okay, let's do this. Whew. Okay. Right. Okay. I'm getting out the bag now. Okay, I'll close my eyes. And um, when it's in my hands, let me know so I can, uh, then I'll open them. Noted. Right, so it's a green banner, so it's an Xbox game, and it's also it's a Series S and X enhanced game. So can I use your Series X to play it? Of course, man. You can have access to my king, and the game you're about I'm about to give you is yours to keep. Ah, uh, thanks a lot, Greg and Caroline. Uh, right. Okay, I'm gonna slow down with this. Ah, oh, damn it, man! Your detention is in suspense. Is killing me. <laughs> right. Okay. The game is in your hands. You may open your eyes. Um, okay, Greg and Caroline, Battlefield 2042 it is. Hey everyone, Miles so far all the way from Kid Robot in Miami. And this time, my friend, as my first review, I review the latest addition to EA's successful Battlefield franchise. Has this game redeemed itself after its failure at launch? Or should the developers raise the white flag now? Well, without further ado, let's find out. Jaden Illusions Creative Entertainment, also known as DICE, is one of the most recognized game developers in the FPS subgenre. For both the right and wrong reasons, it's one of the very few studios that EA is yet to shut down. The biggest franchise in their portfolio is Battlefield. The franchise started in 2002 with Battlefield in 1942. The game was revolutionary at the time as it was the first game that featured an all-out full-scale warfare featuring online battles with up to 64 players. The title was hailed by critics as the best things that happened to the online game since Counter-Strike. Even today, the original Battlefield in 1942 still being played online thanks to fan-made servers, which was due to the shutdown of the GameSpy network. Since then, the franchise has been expanding to various theaters of combat, for example, the Vietnam War as featured in Ben 1942's spiritual successor Battlefield Vietnam and both games of the Bad Company series. The franchise also features World War I was featured in Battlefield 1 for the first time ever in the subgenre. The franchise also featured near futuristic combat thanks to Battlefield 2142, released in 2006. Similar to 1942, the multiplayer remains active thanks to fan made server, despite EA's attempts to shut the game down completely. So, here we are in the latest addition to the Battlefield franchise Battlefield 2042. As the name suggests, this game is a prequel to the aforementioned Battlefield 2142. The game is set in a bleak future. The world economy is collapsing and alliances formed are broken, including the European Union when Germany declared bankruptcy. Worse, 
excessive global warming is actively causing the sea levels to rise. A massive event involving 70% of the world's satellites deorbiting due to the Kessler effect, seriously guys, Google it, has caused a huge permanent global power outage. This caused tensions between the USA and Russia to skyrocket, leading outbreak of war in the year 2042. You play as a soldier on both sides of the conflict. It is up to you to fight your way through the various multiplayer battles to resolve the conflict. The accessibility scores are as follows. To get the ball rolling, visibility has scored a sky high 11. In terms of this category, DICE feels to disappoint. The accessibility section of the options menu is extensive. You can tailor the color scheme to suit your impairment. In a highly competitive environment, for example a first person shooter, this feature is a lifeline for a player with visual impairments. Next on the agenda, audibility, I again scored a sky high 11. There is subtitle support which can be enabled and disabled via the accessibility sections of the options menu. The font size given the background can be customized to via the same section. This allows a player with a visual impairment to read the subtitles without the risk of getting any eye strain. Also, a player with a hearing impairment will be able to play this game with no issues whatsoever. Next up, mobility is scored a sky high 11. Once again, DICE fails to disappoint in this category. You can switch between the hold and toggle mode for a variety of functions, for example, aiming down the sight and steadying your aim when using scope weapons, for example, a sniper rifle. You can also tailor the button layouts to see your impairments. The stick layout can also be customized, including a legacy stick layout. So a player with a mobility impairment should be able to play this game with no issues whatsoever. And last but certainly not least, gameplay has scored a reasonably low 7. So let's be honest here, this game is a little underwhelming. This was an absolute debacle at launch with bugs like performance issues even on next generation systems, for example the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S and X, this also this game lacks a single player campaign. Now the majority of Battlefield games normally have a single player campaign. Hardline 3 and 1 are prime examples of these. This game is also somewhat plagiarized from the recent Call of Duty titles. This game has a battle pass system. These battle passes grant access to rewards as you grind through the game. You can also purchase premium battle passes with money, which allows you to access better, war war better rewards than the free ones. All on top of that, there is an operator system. However, this one is a little unique. Each operator represents a class, for example, assault riflemen and medics. However, the amount of content available in this game is somewhat lacking. For example, you can only play Assault and Breakthrough modes, which is the game's attack and defense game mode. Fan favorites, for example, Rush can only be accessed to the Battlefield Portal. Battlefield Portal makes this game stand out from the crowd. You can play servers running remastered versions of previous games running on Battlefield, Battlefield 2042's engine. So you can recreate those long summer days of 2002 playing Battlefield 1942. Also, the server browser allows you to find a specific server without the need for matchmaking. As I have previously stated, the lack of single player campaign is, in my honest opinion, the biggest issue I have with the game. However, you can play multiplayer matches with AI players, so you can hone your skills before playing the multiplayer matches online. In summary, Battlefield 2042 is a decent first person shooter. The franchise's return to futuristic combat feels like a breath of fresh air to the franchise. However, in terms of single player campaign, the content feels somewhat lackluster. If so if you're looking for a multiplayer only game for you to play on the run up to Modern Warfare 2's release in October this year, this game could be a good choice and the overall score is a perfect 100%. See you guys in the next review. My own sales power, all the way from Kid Robot in Miami, signing off. Rollouts, Burn Legion.